Our rules are simple, but the challenge is great. No shoulder pets, tames that can be carried, or typical boss dinos allowed. That means no Rexus, Therizinos, or any other dinos people normally use in these fights. Equipped with official server cap saddles, our 19 contenders will be backed by the commanding presence of a loyal Uteranus providing that extra boost. All competitors will go into battle with food to provide a healing effect. Herbivores will have plenty of sweet veggie cakes, and carnivores and omnivores will have cooked meat. No Overseer because the movement speed required to get through the tech cave then chase the Overseer during the fight would shorten our list by a lot. It's important to note that tames in this series aren't typically used during boss battles because of the amount of mutations it would take to make them competitive. I'll be applying around 23,000 health and 1200% melee through mutations and experience levels to all dinos that compete. This will give them all a fair shot at defeating at least one of the Guardians. It won't always be feasible to reach these stats depending on the dinos I'm using, but I will let you know the amount of mutations and levels it took in order to reach it. All competitors start out with 50 base health and melee and 40 points and everything else before I apply mutations and experience levels. Use this information and decide on your own servers if the juice is worth the squeeze. Competitors are required to fight the Megapithecus, Broodmother, then Dragon on all difficulties, starting with Gamma, then Beta, finishing with Alpha. Their success will be annotated on this scorecard with a pass or fail system. Now let's introduce our competitor and see if they have what it takes. Giganoraptor. Welcome the newest addition to the Ark family. This giant peacock, stork, chicken looking son of a gun spawns with a nest and a baby. It has a very unique taming method that involves distracting the parent while playing a minigame with the baby. The Giganoraptor is an omnivore that harvests a wide variety of things like berries, wood, and thatch. I had to do this episode a little bit different since I couldn't find the blueprint path for this fella, so the stats, other than health and melee, are a little bit higher than you would normally see. But that doesn't really matter. Starting with 50 base health and melee, these guys will need 14 mutations and 72 experience levels to reach these stats. 4 mutations and 19 levels went into health, and 10 mutations and 53 levels went into melee. I'm sure some of y'all are curious about the baby mechanic, so here you go. Baby Uch is going to be picked up by the Giganoraptor, and you're going to see at the bottom of the screen that he's currently resting. Once the resting phase is over, he goes into murder mode. Baby Uch demands a sacrifice, and you're going to have to kill whatever it says you need to. In this case, I needed to kill something level 90 or above. Once you kill it, you go back to the resting phase. Eventually, you're going to get all the kills done that the baby's requesting, and when you do, you're going to go into bonded status. This now provides the Giganoraptor a damage buff. There's also this little heart symbol in the middle of the screen. I don't really know what it means, but once it runs out, it starts with five and it'll tick down to zero. Um, you're gonna lose that damage buff. Maybe having two babies in there will, will make it higher, but I didn't test it out. I didn't get much further than this. I just wanted to show you the basics of it before we get into the tournament. The green portal was running and the under geese were honking ready to storm into the Gamma Megapithecus arena. Under goose, under chicken, under hen, I could have went so many ways with this. But geese are ferocious assholes, just like the Giganoraptor. Their high speed makes maneuvering a breeze, and we're blessed with a not so janky hitbox. Their damage does leave a little bit to be desired, but this is the Gamma Megapithecus we're talking about. He's not trouble for the Giga Chickens, and they peck his eyes out rather quickly, earning their first pass of the night. The Gamma Broodmother is up next, and the Giga Ducks surround her quickly and start going to work. The Giganoraptor holds aggro from the bosses with ease, and even if they didn't, their big size would probably prevent the Broodmother from getting all over Commander Utes. I started to feel like their damage output with their primary attack just wasn't going to cut it. Their rate of attack isn't the best either, and those two things combined usually spell disaster. The secondary attack is actually super powerful, and I'm shocked they don't use it more compared to some other creatures. We'd be seeing some big numbers if they did. The Gamma Broodmother proves to be no match for the Undergeese, and they take her down, earning another pass. The Gamma Dragon was up next, and the only thing I could think of coming into this fight was would the Giga Turkey's height be a problem here? If you're a fan of the series, you've probably seen in the past where smaller creatures can get up close to the dragon's feet and put a hurtin' on him while staying out of range from his fire breath. The Uteranus can even wedge himself under there in a way where he can dodge the attacks, but when you're talking about shoving 19 parakeets up there, come on man, most people haven't done something like that since college. The under geese do a fairly good job doing what they need to do, and again, maneuvering them is so refreshing. We lost three brave warriors to the dragon's fire, but that wasn't enough to stop this omelet from being made, and the killer quackers defeat the dragon, earning another pass. The blue portal was open, and the cockatoos from hell were ready to show the beta megapithecus a good time. Once the big man was surrounded, they went to work. They do get pushed around a lot by the Gigantopithecus in this fight, so you have to be careful to make sure your fighters don't get pushed off the edge. 
Since they hold aggro, this fight is just an easy courage roar and cleanup match for Commander Utes. I'm sure he's grateful that he doesn't have to get burned to death in this arena. I've said it before and the Megapithecus needs a buff. Make his boulder into a giant snowball and have it freeze things in place. That'll show those pesky survivors. The Giga Tweets put the beta Megapithecus into the dirt while receiving minimal damage, earning another pass. The Beta Broodmother poses a serious threat in this challenge. I had my doubts going into this fight, but also a little bit of hope. Honestly, if these new dinos dominated this completely without showing any weakness, I'd probably be pretty disappointed. New dinos have come out many times through the years and have been added to the official clusters. Every time, it seems like they make old dinos obsolete. It really is nice to not be a killing machine, to be honest. The Giganoraptor might be a little overpowered with its speed and glide ability, but it's definitely not super ridiculous like things like the Rhinio. The Beta Broodmother fight can be a little bit tricky because it takes longer, and the Aranios in this fight actually deal enough damage to be troublesome if you don't take care of them. The damage that the Rotisserie Roadrunners took in this fight really wasn't all that bad, and they pulled off another victory. That's a pass for the scorecard. Beta Dragon. I had some serious concerns. We lost three in the Gamma Dragon fight, and that fire isn't going anywhere. Clearing this stage would earn the Undergeese at least a Silver Boom medal, and honestly I kinda wanted them to pull this off. It started off pretty solid and I took the first Fire Breath. I think this is a good strategy if you're playing solo. Only one Dino takes the Fire Breath instead of the entire team. I actually do this twice in this fight. Three times can work, but sometimes you can catch a random shot of fire if you're positioned incorrectly, so I didn't try my luck pass too. Four usually spells Doom for a Carnivore. I know most of you probably know, but the Giganoraptor is an Omnivore, and Veggie Cakes don't work. The Beta Dragon managed to take out 8 Undergeese during this fight, and it was a pretty close call for the remaining fighters. In the end, they were able to pull it off and earn yet another pass. Red Portal time, baby, and the Undergeese were clucking ready to dump a healthy load of whitewash on the Alpha Megapithecus. They soared into his arena like he just pulled out of the car wash. The Undergeese took this fight on in the standard formation, the Ass Whooping Circle. It'd actually be really cool if I could do a Flying V, but alas. The Alpha Megapithecus isn't always an easy win, but in this situation, piece of cake. He takes a while to go down due to the lower damage from the Undergeese, but go down he sure does, and the Undergeese snag another easy pass. Have you ever ran into your ex at, let's say, a dark cave full of her babies? Well, me too. Actually, this is kind of what happened here with the Alpha Broodmother. She was pretty angry with me with how I acted last time, and deep down, part of me wants her back. But I know it's a bad idea, she just, she's so freaky and I just love it. So during the little mix up here, and by the way, complete coincidence running into her down here. I may or may not have asked her to call me. I know some of you are going to get upset by that, but honestly, I don't think she's going to because after I did, she started eating all my undergeese. Then she completely tore through Commander Utes. After Commander Utes dropped, my pants magically fell off and I started heading towards our favorite love making spot. She wasn't having it though, and dropped me like a bad habit, handing the Undergeese their first fail. The Alpha Dragon was not a happy camper when we rolled into its cozy volcano. The Cockadoodle Dominators were running out of steam, but this fight started off pretty good. I had some high confidence for a while during this fight, but the damn dragon just kept taking off and eventually the fire breath became too much to handle. Giga turkeys were getting roasted into delicious platters left and right. Rotisserie here, smoked there, God, I could... I could really go for some smoke duck right about now. The Undergeese put up a hell of a fight, but Commander Utes burned to death, and I had to hop on over to a battle chicken. We fought as hard as we could, and eventually all of my armor was gone, and a crazy Dimorphodon took me out with one hit. The night is capped off with a fail. Heading over to the scoreboard, the Undergeese earn a well-deserved Silver Boom medal for clearing the entire beta stage. I think this creature is an awesome addition to Ark, and I hope you get a lot of use out of it. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for your patience since it's been a little out of the ordinary. I just really wanted to get this one made and out to you as soon as possible. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.